Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tack, but it's otherwise known as your friendly neighborhood basement dweller. Don't worry, ma'am, I am from the internet. Today, I want to be checking out this TP Link A5400 dual band six streams. Don't cross the streams, ladies and gentlemen. Archer AX73. This is the most powerful unit that I've been in front of. Let's take a look at the back and see how fast this thing is. What? Clearly, this thing is not as fast as your typical D Link because the art on the back is not as badass so we have a 1.5 gigahertz triple core cpu on the inside to make this thing work better now ooh, 8k this thing's supposed to be great for 8k okay so one of the things about uh wireless wi-fi 6 once again this is ax this is wi-fi 6 it is faster than ac but nowhere near as uh, has the big difference as there was between the speed in n versus ac this is made mo mostly you so that you can hook up more things to it and it will run better with multiple things hooked up and the, the terms in these days we have everything's on the internet the internet of things the world needs wi-fi 6 unfortunately so let's get into this sweet thing and see what's on the inside all right here we'll flip her open I'm immediately happy to see that they've continued using uh the recyclable boxes oh yeah good good recyclable padding no colonel no oh, colonel got saved not my cup of water though uh oh whoa my feet are wet right now anyways so here we have all the information we need we got the wi-fi mahoozits we got the quick installation guide we have the setup and all of the fun stuff and let's take the unit out all right so these antennas are attached directly bit of a pain in the butt to get off all right, so when we get this thing off, this is what we got. Oh, I like the fact that uh, we have kind of a pattern going on here because the thing about that, wait, oh, me gusta. The thing about that is, man, I just got that thing off and I already got some marks on there. Maybe not marks, but yeah, you see that? I'm never getting that off. I hate how smooth that is. I hate it. Got USB 3.0 on the side. That's interesting. I decided to put it on there and not on the back. Very thoughtful. We got a power button here. Turn the thing on. The power plug's in there. The Wi-Fi. Okay, so if you have... All right, if you have an internet box, you hook a cable from there into here, and then you hook all your computers into here. We've got four LAN cables, reset button, the Wi-Fi, WSPS, and the LED to turn the lights on and off. Uh, up at the top, we have power, uh, power, super power. I got to figure out what that is, internet. And, oh, I think that, mean, that probably means 2.4 and 5 and something. And WSPS, USB, right on. All of the lights for everything that you need to know. So let's turn on the juice and see what shakes loose, eh? Okay, guys, let's cut directly to the chase. Now, this is my standard battle station. This unit over on the left on the floor is my Alexandrian backup. That's where I keep all my backups. The unit on the right is where I keep all of my stuff uh, that I'm working on. That's my workhorse. Here in the middle where you have the proving grounds. Now I'm gonna transfer directly from the uh, Alexandrian backup to the uh, workstation. Everything here is operating off of Wi-Fi 6, brand name units, line of sight to the router. Oh, you're not gonna like this, it's gonna look dirty. Oh, it's my basement, oh no. That is where the router is. This is line of sight. Let's see what the fastest transfer rate is that I can get. Wait a sec, no, no, that can't be right. Nine megs? This is pathetic, this is like wireless end speed. And you can see over here that I only have the one connection, the AX5400. Now if we go down to the app, which is the way that we set the unit up, we can see that uh, it does have a 4G and a 5G, and they both, well, they'll take separate passwords. You ever get one of those days where you have a tech project and everything around you starts falling apart? I've been having a lot of that recently. And today what's been happening is I get this thing online. This thing gets online and... It has a smart feature, of course, which means that you connect something and it will determine whether you need to be connected to the 2.4 or the 5G. And unfortunately, it was putting everything on the 2.4. So I had to go within the app and tell it to turn off that smart feature and then I could proceed. But before I did that, I had to update windows to windows 20 hk and that changed the share settings within my computer and i could no longer get into it so i had to go through the uh everything again to figure out why my share settings had stopped but once i had done that i was blown away by the results oh frick guys after a little bit of tweaking check it out 50 megabytes a second that's the fastest i've ever had over land this is perfect i'm so happy with this Mom, mom, yeah, 50 megabytes a second, mom, 50 megabytes a second, can you believe that? 
50 megabytes a second. I've never had a router go that fast. The TP-Link that I've had before, I think it was the AX1500, the AX1800, the AX3000. None of them came anywhere near that. I'm pretty sure that they all capped at around 19, maybe 20, 25. My Asus, I had an Asus router that actually managed to do 30 on the Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi AC. But man, 40, 50 megabytes a second? That's just crazy. This is the best router I've ever reviewed. Next up, let's have a look at the Wi-Fi analyzer. We'll see the spectrum and see exactly where it placed itself within it. Now, you see these arches here. If you're new here, the idea is you want your arches to not be conflicting with other arches. It's better to be within another set of arches than it is to be conflicting with the arches. Uh, the arches are going over channels. The more channels that you're using, the better, but some devices that you have don't operate very nicely uh, over too many channels. Like an older thing isn't going to communicate over channel 11 to 13 uh, as well, in theory. In theory. Anyways, here's a 2.4 band. As you can see, Aris is uh, uh, in conflict with your fault. And uh, the AX5400 is conflicting with Irvine. That stuff just kind of happens. And uh, here we see in the 5G, the bands are definitely better. Now, the reason why I like to check this stuff out is to see just how intelligently the router has placed itself. If it actually did it actually take a look to see what was out there before it jumped on, uh, maybe. Once again, it's time for a true range test where I hook the router up and then go into the back 40, hope that the can Canadian geese don't kill me, and see how far my range will get, at least while I still have that kind of range. Wi-Fi uh, analyzer says I'm connected at uh, just over 100 megabytes a second. Okay, y'all better smash the like button for me for being out here. Anyways, my wife watches other people's kids. I clean that like once a day, and it's always, oh my god, by the next day. Anyways, access point is sitting up here. And I basically have no 5G signal. That is interesting. So we got to remember that 5G can't penetrate walls or windows very well. Here's the 2.4G. Yeah, that's right. Dig it all in your paws. My wife's going to kill me. What are you digging for? The golf ball's over there. You buried the golf ball, you little dingus. So this is about the point where the Wi-Fi always cuts out with everything and uh, the range seems to be standard on these things. The only difference always comes down to uh, how much data they can push through and this thing can push through a whole lot of data. Okay, so here we are in the graphics user interface if you actually log directly into the unit. And uh, here you got verification You're on the internet. Here's your AX73, the mesh devices. Of course, you can mesh this. And if you go over to the client, it'll show you exactly everything that's connected. And their upload and download right at this moment, interestingly enough. Oh, you can block them too. That is pretty cool. An easy kill switch right there. So if we go into the Archer AX73, here's the information we can see gonna browse through here for the folks who want to see it performance memory usage this is good to have if you have a lot of people that are on your system yeah a lot of good things there anyways let's go over to mesh devices I don't have any mesh devices over on internet wireless I'm having a difficult time scrolling down on this Maybe my scroll wheel's messed up. Home shield. Here's the advanced settings. Mm -hmm. And internet. LAN. IPTV. DHCP. Dynamic DNS, routing, here you can sign in and uh, do all your stuff remotely, wireless settings, here we got the guest network, wireless schedule, WPS information, additional settings, USB, yeah, you can, of course you can hook a USB device up to this thing, and FTP into it unless you're using uh, Samba very nice HD 
or NAT forwarding, port forwarding, port triggering, UPnP, DMZ, security, here's a firewall, access control, IP MAC binding, ALGS, VPN, PPTP, connections, IP version 6, one mesh, and system. We can do firmware updates, but right now I'm on uh, the highest update, so I'm not really too worried about that. You can back up and restore. Administration. System logs. Diagnostics. Time and language. He can reboot it from right here. LED control. And operational mode. That seems to be it. So yeah, I definitely got to say this is a good buy. This is a good router. Excellent top speed. Was not expecting the top speed to get that high. Once again, the fastest Wi-Fi router that I've had. And uh, yeah, check it out, folks. Anyways, that's it for me. Not from this tech, but it's like and subscribe if you like this stuff. It's always appreciated, folks. Take care of each other, will you?